The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship on the first Sunday in Advent, the first Sunday of the new church year, the year of St. Mark's Gospel. At no other time of the year is the church as countercultural as we are in these weeks. For while Christmas decorations have been up in many stores since uh, early fall and Black Friday sales since early November, we in the church insist that we must wait four more weeks before celebrating the birth of Christ because we need to prepare for that momentous event. According to our Gospel reading this morning, the way in which we prepare is by staying awake and alert for the coming of the adult Jesus at the end of time. We do not like to wait under any circumstances, but Paul in our second reading assures us that God will strengthen us until the end so that we might be aware not only and ready for the celebration of Jesus' birth and for his coming at the end of time, but also for all of the ways in which each day he comes among us to answer the cry for which we, uh, that we hear in our first reading from Isaiah. 
Please make sure that you have signed the guest pads and pass them along and greet those with whom you are worshiping. Number of announcements that I'll go through quickly. Thank you to Maggie for being here again this morning and for the band for leading us in worship. We received $185 from the Galveston Give Back Night, so thank you to everybody who participated in that. Uh, there will be coffee downstairs. We hope to see you after the service. Um, the uh, December mission of the month was the uh, angel tree out in the upper narthex. All of the tags disappeared last weekend, so thank you for your generosity. The deadline for getting those back in is a week from tomorrow, so there probably isn't time to get more tags and then give you an opportunity to buy them and get them back here. So if you would like to bring uh, any other toys, you can still leave them unwrapped under the tree next weekend, or you may make a, a strictly a monetary donation to the Salvation Army who is organizing this. So one of the two ways, but thank you again for all of your help with that. As you came in, you saw the offering envelopes for the new year. Please grab those on the way out to save us mailing costs a little bit down the road. Uh, and also, finally, one note about the order of service. The hymn of the day number in your bulletin is incorrect. It says 243. It should be 436. I was close, but not quite. I, I don't know what happened there, but the hymn of the day is 436 instead of 243. With that, we are ready to begin with our order for confession. As you are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show us the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. In Advent, we face the darkness, both within and around us, and cry out to God for healing and wholeness. Let us call upon the name of the Lord in repentance and trust, that by his great mercy, he may restore us to life and hope. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you we have turned away from you and hardened our heart against you. We have strayed from your ways in thought, word, and deed. We do not call upon your name as you desire. We do not attempt to take hold of you and your love for us. We have not been awake to your advent among us. Our love and faithfulness fades like a leaf, and our sin takes us away from you. Of all this we repent, O God. We implore you of your great goodness to have mercy on us. Forgive us, guide us into new and faithful living, and bring us to everlasting life. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not remember our iniquity forever. God rescues us from our sins, and in mercy molds us into a new creation for faithful and patient living and waiting. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
open our darkness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. You call all nations to walk in your light and to seek your ways of justice and peace. For the night has passed, and the dawn of your coming is near. Bless us as we light the first candle on this log. Rouse us from sleep, that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes and welcome him into our hearts and homes, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever.
The first reading is from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. And as when fires kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you. Who works for those who wait for him? You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. <clears throat> Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will your anger fume when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one who made strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the re revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The 13th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, In those days, 
after that suffering. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds and with great power and glory. Then he sent, will send the angels out to gather the elect from the four winds, from the end of the earth to the end of the heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gate. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away before all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day and that hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with their, his own work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The centuries have dulled neither the pain nor the cry. Oh, that you would tear the heavens open and come down. Lutheran Old Testament scholar Michael Chan says that at the heart of Advent is a deep wound. God's groaning and limping creation still waits for its healer to appear in glory. Advent is the time when we name how alone and frightened we are in this dark and terrifying world. But we have not completely lost hope. We cling to Isaiah's promise that, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father, and we are all the works of your hand. And we trust with Paul that this faithful God will strengthen us to the end and keep us both blameless and awake to all of the ways in which God comes daily among us to answer our cry. Such a hope is grounded in the fact that Jesus' words here directly answer Isaiah's plea. Remember that the prophet is writing to those who are in exile. They have been torn from home and land and forced to live in captivity in a foreign nation. They remembered God's mighty acts of old, how he did come down and the mountains quaked and there was fire and thunder on Mount Sinai when God revealed himself to those whom he had rescued from Egypt. But now it seems to them, and perhaps also to us, that God is distant. He is up there and detached from our pain and unavailable to save us from the troubles that our iniquities have brought us. And they wondered, and perhaps we do as well, why God permits such suffering to continue. Surely a tearing of the heavens and a fireball of power would straighten things out. But such a tearing did take place, not just in the way that we imagined or expected. It first happened at Jesus' baptism. He came down into the muddy creek of the Jordan with all those from Jerusalem and Judea who had responded to the call of John the Baptist to change their ways of neglect and misuse, of selfishness and greed, of hurtful words and actions. And Mark tells us that as Jesus came up out of the water, and he uses the same word here, Jesus saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending upon him, literally being driven into him while the voice declared him to be God's beloved Son. 
And through the power and guidance of that spirit, Jesus continued throughout his ministry to show up in places where we would least expect or imagine God to be found. Among the sick and diseased, the outcast and the dying, the poor and the hungry. In all of those ways, Jesus continued to be strengthened and to show God's presence. And finally, the Spirit strengthened him also to the end. For he was present in the evening at the Last Supper when Judas went out to betray him. And he remained in the garden at midnight when he was arrested, even when everyone else abandoned him. And he stayed true to his commitment to us at dawn when Peter denied him at cockcrow. And then Jesus willingly entered into the most unimaginable God-forsakenness imaginable. He endured when the sun was darkened and the earth shook when the emptiness of death overcame him on the cross. Jesus enters that emptiness so that we would never be left without God's presence again, ever. And then the good news is that on Easter morning, the doorkeeper of the tomb, the angel, proclaimed to the women that in the midst of death and burial and darkness, God had indeed brought the new life for which we cry. Now, because Jesus lives, in whatever way you wait for God, you do not wait without God. Now, because Jesus lives, you never wait without God, and God is never absent from you or for you. That means that our waiting is not empty. Jesus has given each of us work to do until he returns. You have speech and knowledge of God's ways for home and neighbor and family and friends and your workplace. And through every small act of kindness and compassion and mercy and forgiveness and sacrifice and love, that kingdom is revealed. But we must be ready, for his coming is certain. And his day, silently, unexpectedly, draws near.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Walking in the light of the coming Savior, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who await the dawn of God's justice. That the church might be roused from sleep and kept awake and watchful to the nearness of Christ's advent, we pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That despite corruption, misuse of power, and unjust policies, God might enlighten leaders of nations to serve as instruments of his goodness and peace. We pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That this assembly, enriched in speech and knowledge of every kind, might faithfully carry out our work of bearing witness to Christ's coming among us. We pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That families in conflict, those afflicted with depression, doubt, and despair in these days, and the sick, especially Joan Seifert, Christine Kaiser, Betty Urist, Vinia Wendt, Jana Thomas, Charles Ponder Sr., Jan Poholsky, Laura Dovey, Kay Kleinschmidt, Virginia Murray, and Brian Wiseman might be restored to hope, health, and wholeness. We pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That those celebrating birthdays, especially Donna Otterson and Judy Gleason, may be filled with grace this day and every day, and grow in grace in the days ahead. We pray to the Lord. That with all the saints who have gone before us, especially Francis Xavier, missionary, whom we commemorate this day, we too might be blameless at Christ's coming. We pray to the Lord. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Show us your light, O God, and bring us to see the day of our redemption through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of that peace. Be with you.
Let us pray. God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day, and sustain us with your promise of everlasting life. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, Shepherd of Israel, our Father, we bless and praise you. There is no God beside you who works for those who wait for him. In great love you created us and all the works of your hands. You revealed yourself to Israel at the sea, as the mountains quaked at Sinai, and in her prophet's words that all might know your name. When the time came, you revealed yourself in your Son, Jesus Christ. He is our grace and strength in whom we find fellowship with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. With this bread and cup, we remember his advent among us in the flesh, his life and death for others, and his rising in triumph over all threats to your love. He promised to return with great power and glory to gather the elect into your kingdom. So, with readiness and alertness, we watch and pray. Amen. Send now your Holy Spirit on us and these your gifts of bread and wine. May we lack no spiritual gift of faith or love as we wait for his revealing and to be made blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church in heaven and on earth now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lord whose advent we await, who will come with glory on the day of judgment. Blessed are those who were called to the banquet of the Lamb, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Come, for all is now ready.
as you are able, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, once more you have strengthened us through the gift of your body and blood. As you again send us to our work, keep us alert for your advent. Increase our longing for your return, that the dawn of your coming may find us rejoicing in your presence and welcoming the light of your truth. We bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. God is faithful and will strengthen you to the end as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Thank you.